Hey guys, welcome back to Bye Bye Dictation. We are back with another series in which we'll complete the entire human reproduction in four parts. Every day a new video will be uploaded at 10:30 a.m. So, this video ko end tak dekhna. Without wasting any time, let's begin our first lecture. Humans are unisexual and viviparous. The major reproductive organs include the external genitalia like the penis in males and vulva in females. Along with a number of internal organs including the gamete producing gonads like the testicles in male and the ovaries in female. Let us learn about the organs of the male reproductive system first. The male reproductive system is located in the pelvic region. It includes the testes, accessory ducts, accessory glands and external genitalia. The testes are covered by a sac-like protuberance of skin and muscles called the scrotum. The scrotum lies between the penis and the anus. The testes need to be at temperature of 2 to 2.5 degrees less than the body temperature to produce sperms. Hence, the scrotum is outside the body and has a temperature lower than the body. The testes are oval in shape with a length of about 4 to 5 cm and the width of about 2 to 3 cm. The testes are surrounded by a tough connective tissue called the tunica albuginea. Each testis has 250 compartments called testicular lobules. Each lobule in turn contains 1, 2, 3 highly coiled seminiferous tubules. The lining of each seminiferous tubule is called the germinal epithelium and contains the main germ cell known as the spermatogonia and Sertoli cells. The male germ cells undergo meiotic division to form mature sperm cells. This process is known as spermatogenesis. The Sertoli cells provide nutrition to the germ cell. The region outside to the seminiferous tubules contain blood capillaries and nerve fibers and small groups of large glandular cells are called interstitial cells or Leydig cells. Leydig cells synthesize and secrete testicular hormones called as androgens. Preti testis, vas efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens are the male accessory ducts. The reti testis is a network of ductules formed by seminiferous tubules. Vasa efferentia are ciliated ductules that arise from the reti testis. They collect sperms and transfer them to the epididymis. The epididymis is a long, narrow, highly coiled tube present along the posterior surface of the testis. It is divided into three parts anterior, lateral epididymis, middle, corpus epididymis and posterior, corda epididymis. The epididymis stores the sperms temporarily and nourishes them. The epididymis leads to vast difference that ascends into the abdomen and curves around the ureter. This loops over the urinary bladder. It extends backwards and receives the duct from the seminal vesicles and finally opens into the urethra as an ejaculatory duct. The neck of the urinary bladder and prostate gland opens into the urethra or urinogenital canal. The urethra extends through the penis to its external opening called the urethral meters or urinogenital aperture. The urethra is the common passage for urine and semen. The male accessory glands includes a pair of seminal vesicles, the prostate, and a pair of bulbourethral glands. They secrete seminal fluid that contains fructose and prostaglandins. The prostate gland is present at the base of the urinary bladder. Around the base of the seminal vesicles, it opens into the urethra through many ducts. 
The prostatic fluid contains the calcium citrate and phosphate ions. The bulbourethral gland or Cowper's glands are pea-sized structures lying posterior to the prostate gland and at the base of the penis. The secretions help in lubrication of the penis. The external genitalia in males is called the penis. The penis is the copulatory organ and is covered by a loose sheath of skin. The skin that hangs over the tip of the penis is known as pubis or foreskin. It is made up of special tissues like corpora cavorosa and corpus spongiosa. The tip of the penis covered by the pervis is called the glans penis. The penis, urethra, vas deferens and Cowper's gland together help in copulation and in the preposition of sperm within the female body. Now we'll study the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system includes the ovaries, oviducts, uterus, cervix, vagina and the external genitalia located in the pelvic region. Along with a pair of mammillary gland it supports the process of ovulation, fertilization, pregnancy, childbirth and child care. Let us study each organ in detail. The female reproductive system includes a pair of ovaries located one on each side of the lower abdomen. They are the primary sex organs as they produce the ovum or the female gamete. Each ovary is about 2 to 4 cm in length. They are connected to the pelvic wall and the uterus by ligaments called mesovarium. Each ovary is covered by an outer thin layer called the germinal epithelium. The germinal epithelium encloses the ovarian stroma which is further divided into outer cortex and the inner medulla. The cortex consists of many ovarian follicles in different stages of development. The ovarian follicle is the basic unit of female reproductive system and is composed of a roughly spherical aggregations of cells found in ovary. The accessory ducts of the female reproductive system are vagina, oviduct and the uterus. The pair of oviduct or fallopian tube is about 10 to 12 cm long and extends from the periphery of each ovary to the uterus. Each oviduct is differentiated into three parts namely the infundibulum, ampulla and isthmus. The infundibulum is a dilated funnel close to the ovary and its edges are surrounded by finger-like projections called the fimbriae. They help collect and push the ovum after ovulation. The ampulla is the swollen and curved part behind the infundibulum. The fertilization of ovum takes place in this part. The narrow and straight cavity and it joins the uterus. The uterus is a hollow pear-shaped muscular organ and is highly dispensable. It is situated in the pelvic cavity between the urinary bladder and the rectum. It is also known as the womb. It is surrounded by the ligaments attached to the pelvic wall known as mesometrium. The uterus opens into the vagina through a narrow cervix. The cavity of cervix is called the cervical canal, which along with the vagina forms the birth canal. The wall of uterus is composed of the three tissues. The outermost membranous layer is called the perimetrium. The middle thick layer of smooth muscle is called the mesometrium and it helps during delivery by producing strong contraction motions. The inner glandular layer is called the endometrium and it undergoes cyclical changes during the menstrual cycle. 
the vagina is a muscular tube starting from the lower end of the uterus up to outside. The opening of the vagina in young female is partially covered by a thin membrane called hymen. The hymen is frequently ruptured in childhood due to strenuous physical exercise. The female external genitalia includes the mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora and the clitoris. The labia majora contains fleshy folds of tissue that extends down from the mons pubis and surrounds the vaginal opening. Hidden under the labia majora is the labia minora. Towards its upper end lies the clitoris. A small finger-like structure and below it is the urethral opening. The female reproductive structure is supported by the mammary glands. The mammary glands or breasts are modified sweat glands that lie over the pectoral muscles. They contain glandular tissues and a variable amount of fat. Internally, each breast is divided into 15 to 20 mammary lobes containing clusters of cells called the alveoli. The alveoli open into the mammary tubules. The tubules of each lobe join to form the mammary duct. Several ducts join to form a wider ampulla which is connected to the lactiferous duct. The lactiferous duct opens out to the nipple from which milk is sucked out. So here it ends. Congratulations, you successfully completed a major part of human reproduction today, which is the most important chapter for NEET. Three se four questions this chapter se aate hi hai. To kal fir milte hai part two mein. Saare is baje ka alarm laga lena. We'll cover gametogenesis in part two. Make sure you like, subscribe and comment the additional topics that you want to master from biomedication. You'll get the video within 24 hours of your request as I did with the previous video on generation and conduction of nerve impulse which was requested by Himanji. Tab tak ke liye all the very best. Keep hustling. Bye bye.